Um, okay. Until the name base. Uh, try again. Breaking these teeth in for a horse. I shall take a drink and probably a hay fever tablet if I've got one, which I don't predictably. So, what I'm going to do is. Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is implement this one and actually this one at the same time. So, this is going to get hairy very quickly. So, this is the hairy bit, right? This bit's kind of easy to understand. Now, what I've currently done is. Imagine this is the header file that is part of my client API, if you like. I mean, at the moment, I'm only binding the database within my application. It's not like a separate thing that sits off on a server or anything yet. But at the moment, this is what a user sees of my implementation. Um, so they see these useful um, definitions, but they also see the implementations. Um, now, what this means is if they build an application that's bound to this particular library, if I added another thing in here like standard string member flibble, which is obviously has a value of flibble, um, but if I did that and then compile this and ship that as version two of my library, everybody's application would break and they'd have to recompile it. And the reason for that is because C++ will basically, when it compiles this, will create a size for this object. And it's based on the size of the members. Now these are all effectively references to strings. That's two string references size. It's now three string references size, so everybody's stuff breaks. Now you don't want to do that. <coughs> so what you want to do, <coughs> excuse me, what you want to do here is um, effectively make this a bit um, better and just basically abstract all of this out. And this is where the pimple idiom comes in. This is pointer to implementation. Um, so this was created a while, and my memory is terrible. Um, but there's a very good book which is called API Design for C++, and it is like was my bible a couple of years ago when I wrote a database client library in C++ for SQL over a NoSQL database, um, and it was absolutely amazing. Made sure I got it very got it right. Had good memory management and you know good API definitions. Um, and yeah, API design uh, for C++, fantastic book, definitely recommend the Kindle version um, to go and do that. But what this basically means is I need to get these the hell out of here. Now, what I can do is I can have a pointer to another class and then do all the implementation in that class. Now, because, because it's a pointer to that class, it's always the same size, no matter how big that class goes, because it's just pointing to it. So uh, obviously there's no such thing as standard pointer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all these and put them in an implementation class, okay? Uh, and the implementation class is going to be in database.cpp. Um, so it's going to be you know, So I want the hidden uh, database impulse class. Yeah, yeah, and the way you do this is you'd be quite cheeky and you change that from protected to private. You have a class impl you define here. You get rid of all of this stuff. Oops, not that stuff there. Uh, and then you say, well, okay, here I've got a uh, standard unique printer uh, to my impl class. I call it member impl. That is the only member that this has. And because this class is private, what the compiler does is it doesn't link it or expose it to the client library. So this, if this was over here, then it'd mean that this class could call, uh, sorry, that um, the user could figure out by rewriting some clever stuff, public private, uh, they could yeah, that would link into their application, it would break again. But by doing this, I totally hide it. Now I'm doing a stand, uh, standard unique pointer here because I want um, that particular implementation instance to not be shared, to always be bound to this particular class. You can use shared pointer as well if you create copies and you want multiple things pointing there, but I do not want that um, in this particular implementation. Um, and that's for long-winded reasons which we'll talk about later. Um, what I'll also do whilst I'm at it is I'll make these a bit more uh, standardized. There you go, it looks a bit more uh, sensible. That doesn't return anything, I'll just leave it there. Right. 
So that now you can grok it a bit easier when you just come back to this class. There's obviously a whole host of other issues here, like copying stuff, but we'll cover that in a different lesson. So now what I've done is I've made this implementation uh, separate, but I've actually got to go and implement the damn thing. Uh, because at the moment, boom, mname, etc. So I need to go and implement database, colon, colon, impl, um, colon, colon, impl. Now, this is somewhat torturous. What this basically means is that's a class, that's the constructor, and it's empty, boom. So, uh, so what I want to do is I want this to be the same signature um, as my top level class, because it's basically just going to be, uh, now you don't have to, your implementation can be whatever you want, but for ease and simplicity, that's what I'm going to do, um, which also means I'm going to do something else. Um, yeah, so at the moment, this class could technically be instantiated. Um, now, what I want is I want my client API to not be instantiable. I just want them to be references. I'm going to make this an interface. And by that, what I mean is it's constructor. Uh, it doesn't matter what the constructor is, because it's going to be hidden from the user. Um, and what I'm going to do is uh oh, she do you want to do that now i don't do it later do you know what? i'm going to do it later let's get the basics done first because i'll confuse crap out of people actually no i've just did it now um yeah so i'm gonna make this private and this is just going to be a uh, kind of tagging interface right um so always going to be the same size and this is going to return an i database so an i database so this becomes a uh <coughs> Yeah, this becomes effectively a um, just an interface. Hence the eye. Uh, oh no, it's puking. Puking, it's good. So, so what I want to do as well is say, well, okay, I'm going to define a private uh, class here, which is called. Um, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. So this is our existing class structure. What I'm going to do is this. So I'm going to create an embedded database. And the reason it's called embedded databases is at the moment, we're building a binary that has the database libraries built into it and that manages its own database. It's not like a separate thing. So I'm going to call this an embedded database. And this is going to live purely in my CPP file for now. So class embedded database implements i database. Yep. Um, and then what I will have here is a public method is my constructor yep um and because it implements i database i get my private pimple uh reference anyway actually no i don't want that at all do i what i want to do i'm going to yank that out so that you don't see anything about the implementation you just see the fact it's got a whole bunch of methods and then i'm going to put that in here now, I'm still going to have this here. The reason I'm going to have this here is because I may want to pull this apart again in the future, okay? So I may have internal clients within my server API, such as you know, people implementing a plugin that uses the embedded database. So I still want this level of indirection. Now, it's a bit confusing, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, okay, this is this class here, and these are all embedded database. Embedded database. Uh, are with me. This to be an I database. Let's be an I embedded database. Embedded, 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 embedded. Okay, so now I've done all that. What you'll notice is it's still puking because it's like, well, you're not got those members, which is true, but it's also puking because you've not got these definitions, and that's absolutely correct. Because what I've not done is I've not actually overridden them. Now, what I've done here is I've not said the override is required in order to be um, in order to be a valid implementation. So what I want to do is I'll make all these virtual.
I'm not sure if you do that with static methods, obviously not. Um, um, but I want to make them pure virtual. And what this does is it says you must implement this in order to be a valid um, implementation. Okay. Now, I don't think, yeah, you don't do that. Sorry, in case I'm the wrong thing. You can't do that for static methods, obviously, because they're not virtual, they're static. Um, well, let's see, whinging them out. Error or return type is an abstract class. It wants to be a reference. Yes. Because <coughs> you can't return a value that's an abstract class because you can't implement it. What we can do is return a reference to an abstract class, which is now what I'm doing in. That's annoying. Okay, so now these are pure virtual methods, um, no constructor. Um, but what I do need is I do need a pure virtual destructor. Um, and the reason for that is um, because I could implement this in several ways and have members. Now, if I've just got a reference to the I database, the outer part, when I delete that, it will delete the outer part and leave hanging references. So weirdly, even though I'm not really doing anything, I have to have a pure virtual destructor. What I also have to do is say, well, you can't instantiate this. And the way you do that in C++ is you make um, the constructor pure virtual as well, right? No, constructor can't be declared virtual, what am I talking about? Yeah. So basically say, uh, it calls delete, I think it is. Yeah, there we go. So this is kind of modern C++ mechanism to say, this I database constructor, don't create one. Um, if, if you're tempted to compile it to create one, please don't create one. So, so this is a long convoluted way to say, this class you cannot instantiate, but we're still managing memory sensibly when you delete it. It has these methods, so it's a bit like duck typing really, if it walks like a duck, smells like a duck. Um, and it's got this method as well. Um, to management function, it's got these static methods, create empty and load. Now you could argue that these shouldn't be in here, and I think I'd probably agree with you, so we'll abstract them out in a minute. But in here, let's make sure that this is working. Embedded database impl impl, doesn't make sense. Uh, incomplete, oh yeah, it's incomplete because we're not implementing all those uh, things. So what we need to do, name. We make this a bit wider. Nested names, better her. So we've got to make sure that this implements this stuff. So all I do is I go through and I cheat. And I go into my file here, paste it in. Oh, virtual, it's not going to be virtual though because we're implementing it. So we're overriding all this stuff. Um, just talking each yourselves in the next 50 minutes whilst I now delete everything I've just added in. Actually, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to leave them as virtual. And the reason is last name after blah blah blah. Oh, yeah. Right, there we go. What I need to do is now implement all of that stuff. Um, so let's go and do that. I could just put these definitions in here, but I don't, I don't like mixed ways of specifying this. Um, so I want, I want the embedded database there and the class impl instance i database. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
simple impulse a constructor so this is the definition of impul oh, let's forget how to do this this would kill on him to me kill on, kill on. i have completely forgotten how to do this bit oh yeah need to do before that bit uh, Yes, 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 class. It'll be after that because it's got to be defined by that. Class impul inference i data. Click. Let's do that. I think I can just do that, can I? How would find in the result type of a function? Oh, that gets me every time. Um, is that still valid now? Yeah, don't forget trailing semicolons because it thinks it's a function. It drives me scrawny every time I do it. Right then. Okay, so now I need to effectively do the same thing as I'm doing here. Now I can have private members, which is standard string m underscore name, standard string m underscore full path. Like so no longer embedded database, it's embedded database impulse. So I can just do, I hope, that and that. There we go. Now again, I could implement these things in line, but I don't like doing that. So what I'm going to do here, now implement these things the way they're meant to be implemented. So I'm going to do that, import, um, which will take these. And that will effectively, oops, not like that. We're going to cut this bit out of the video because it would be a bit boring. It's just basically the same as I did before. So I'm going to put these all here, and it's going to be instead of embedded database everywhere, it's going to be embedded database colon colon impol. Ugh.
Right, there we go. Well, I was thinking better database impul is abstract. You're missing something. These are virtual. Yep. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so if you don't implement the constructor, then it still thinks it's abstract because, well, it is. Um, now we're having a whinge because of this uh, being an lconst value instead of the reference, but we'll worry about that later. Let's get the rest of this implemented. So, effectively, all we're doing now is we've got the original class just becomes the import class. Yep, so you're moving everything back into the C file. All implementation details live in there. Everything up until this point, you know, is effectively um, longer virtual. This becomes my implementation of I database, my default one. I could have other ones. I could have like remote database or clustered database or something like that. So this is the local one. So this is a very thin wrapper that just points to my implementation. Here's my definition of my implementation. Again, exactly the same as this one. They're both pulling the same interface just to make sure I'm not doing it wrong. Um, and then uh, what I then do is then implement my impl. So implement all the implementation functions. So it's no longer abstract, it's now concrete. And now I've got to do the same but for embedded database. And all I'm gonna do here is literally copy all this mumbo jumbo. Um, oops, I put that there, didn't I really? And then in here, embedded database, embedded database, it's gonna be this. I'm gonna get rid of everything in there. Got my destructor, embedded database, come on, come on, tilde embedded database, does nothing, has nothing. Um, <clears throat> now, what I would normally do is destroy the pointer to the impul, but because it's a, uh, I've created it with make unique, it's a smart pointer, so when this class goes out of uh, memory, you'll get deleted anyway. Which is nice, because it means I've not had to remember to do anything in my destructor, but I do, however, need to. And specify it. Um, so it's there. Now all I'm doing here is literally uh, going looking at my impul and saying, uh, well, let me. Static, oh, it's a static member function, of course. Yeah. So here, what I want to do is do uh, embedded impul create empty db name do. And same here, except instead of create, I want to do load like that. Uh, and I want to return. And it's still going to puke because it's expecting, actually, no, these ones should be all right. These ones will puke. Private member. I did database impulse, shouldn't be. Do, do, do. Very definitely public. Oh, again, I'll worry about that in a moment. Get these implemented. So this will be impl destroy. This will be return impl get directory. The impl key value key value. Return import. Oops. <laughs> uh, get key value. 
see. Okay. Yeah, private, private, private. Why is this thing private? Because my definition is private, I bet. Yeah. Because we're calling elements of that class, our class definition has to be public. Okay, so. Maybe not a private member. Declared private. It's really not my friend. That's it. Oh, yeah. Numpty. Yeah. If you don't specify public, it gets declared private. So there you go, it's much more like it. So that's so this becomes just a wrapper to call the implementation. Uh, now what you should do really is put any logic at this level and just use this to just use the implementation to store uh, stuff. Um, I've pushed them all down into the lower level at the moment. A bit naughty. Um, but we'll see. So what we've got to do though is we say everything's working apart from this bit where it's return value here. Non const L value reference. Um, what earth does that mean? Not bind to temporary embedded impulse. Right. Yeah. So what you want to do is <laughs> how to explain this and it's not going to be ridiculously complicated. Um, right, this here um, will create or uh, return a reference to an instance of I database, okay, um, which is fine, but here that's not really what I'm doing. Okay, so what is going on here? So, better be returning a const reference because the reference never changes. Okay, so what we need to do is in here, this definition's const. And the reason for that is, uh, think about it, we're returning this reference, that reference cannot change. If it changes and it falls out of scope, uh, and is destroyed. So we need to make sure the uh, the person calling this understands that they're going to be responsible for taking control of that. Now we've defined that. Uh, up here we need to make sure that these all have constant as well, which we've now done. Um, cool. And same with here. We've got my members there, and then in here we see that all the uh, that all the errors are done. Not so you don't put static in here, but you have to put const. It's a bit annoying. I always forget. So yeah, so now these are working, and I've got a a small warning here. Now it's just a warning, so you might think, "Well, this is fine. It's just a warning." Actually, it's a lot more serious than you think. So what well, this is basically saying is um, okay what I've done is I've created a temporary so I'm creating an instance of impulse here but I'm creating that on the stack so within the um, container of this so like here I've created uh, a baster and a DB folder um, and then pass them to this constructor then done something with them but then these two get destroyed at the end of this function but so does this yeah this is exactly the same as saying um, uh, uh, my document what database I'll tell you what I used to be doing um, <clears throat> new DB 
Uh, so it's exactly the same as doing this. Yeah. And then returning new DB. Now the problem with doing this is that's totally valid, but um, and then returning this. But I can't because this gets destroyed at the end of the function. So I can return a reference to it. Well, that reference is going to be hanging. There's going to be nothing at the end of it because that value will have been destroyed. Now, it might work. It might not work. It would be undefined behavior. So what I've got to do is think, well, okay, what's the better way of doing this? And the better way of doing this is to um, not create it on stack, but to create it on the heap and but manage that in an intelligent way. So what you want to do is you want to use... Uh, unique pointers again. So instead of doing this here, what you want to do is standard unique printer, printer even like that, and you return the whole thing. Yeah. Now you might think, well, if I'm returning the whole thing, then won't that invoke a copy constructor, etc., etc., etc.? Well, you might think that, <clears throat> but no, because what it does is it calls its move constructor. And it will move the implementation of that within uh, this smart pointer. Um, so you're effectively moving control from the function to the implementation. So now I've done that, I need to go and do that everywhere I've used that definition, which is everywhere. So change that, do that. And there. And there. And in here I can do that. And I can do like that. Oh, that's wrong. Okay. And then here again, well, what I'm doing is I'm doing that. EDB, but EDB can go. No, I'm not. That's stupid. EDB. Well, to implicitly deleted copy constructor because it's not a copy constructor. So he's absolutely right. What I want to do is I want to return. I'm not using it. I don't need a reference to it. Get rid. Because otherwise, I'm trying to. I'm creating it in inside this function, then returning a copy of it. And that's not what I'm doing. I want to turn the actual thing. What this will actually do is it will move. It will move this reference from within the control of this function to the caller, um, and that's what I want. I want I want it created as a pointer, but then pass back. I now scroll down. We see we have the same problem here. Hopefully, I've pasted the right thing in there. Yes, I have. So do that, and then do that, and because of the same type, it just works. Boom. So now, theoretically, when all this messing around, but it should magically work. Now these are no longer databases. These are these things. That will be. Embedded database and embedded database. They don't work. Why? Why for shame do they not work? Well, why they don't work is because embedded database is not defined in a header file. Yep. <coughs> so why why oh why is it not defined in here? Well it's not defined in here because if I define it in here then the client API will know about the back end implementation and I don't want that. What I really want to do is I want a kind of an external um you know like an extension so i want um uh an existing directory but it's empty so extensions within there right i'm not gonna add anything to join so add new header file so i'm gonna create this in that slash extensions i think i called it yes i did uh, i'm gonna call this um database Ext. Don't want to do that. I don't want to do X database. Uh, no, I'm just going to call this database. Dot. No, I don't. 
extension database.h decisions decisions the hard life some one two mystery nine hundred there we go so x database so in here what i want to do is in my cpp file here i want to change this and say well this thing here embedded database is part of my internal but kind of external um api so this is my server side extension api this is why I'm creating so many damned files, okay? Um, so, let's not see namespace, ground up db. So no, let's see ground up db ext. It wants to be using namespace. DB. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So that will then enable me to go into here. No, oh, it's amazing when you don't write C++ in my, I totally forget what the hell you're doing. What did namespace name? Oh, I've not included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would help, wouldn't it? Um, I just want to include extensions text database. There we go. The reason I've got X there is just so I don't have a clash in names because I keep forgetting when it renames every bloody thing. But there we go. So that's all in there. So I'm being quite naughty, but I can be quite naughty because it's uh, implementation file. This should work. So I've got x database so ground up db.h puking. Why is it puking? Well, because I don't know how to write code. There we go. So now my public interface doesn't know anything about the implementation. So only using the namespace ground up DB, not the implement the X implementation. Only using database.h. Um, my extension file doesn't know anything about the implementation of how this is being implemented, other than the fact it does use an impl and it's got a pointer to an impl, but doesn't know anything about it, which means I can change that willy nilly and not have to worry about anything. Um, and in my implementation file, I can implement all of it. And in my ground up db implementation file uh, da, 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 da. oh yeah so i need to tell it to use the ext i need to use I shouldn't include all of it really shouldn't i, I should yeah and i want to include and notice i'm not putting the extensions into the ground up db.h file because the ground up db.h file is meant to be um client api files only so let's put one in there only include client api files not yeah, i.e not anything within uh, include slash extensions a reminder um, you know it's in the wrong file <laughs> I'm going to put a warning in here for this warning and in here I'm going to put warning do not edit edit include slash ground up d dot h instead this file is only used by <coughs> tests and CLI, not for pub, not included in the client API distro. And it's not because we're including this one in the client API distro, not this one. So we shouldn't change this one ever. We should have that one include line. So. That's great. So now let's go back to our test and it's going to massively puke now. Boom. 
what's this all about? So we're not returning an instance of a database anymore. We're returning one of them. A smart pointer to a database. To an I database in fact. To more there we go. And these instead of being dots become pointers. So there we go. Same in here. So get rid of that. Boom. These two. Boom and the doom. Um, and these become those become. Not doing search and replace for dot. That'll just get painful. All right, so no warnings there, but you'll notice again that I'm not pulling in any private API. I'm just pulling in the public API. So I'm using um, just the namespace explicitly there. I'm not pulling in the ext namespace, the extensions namespace. So you can see how easy it is to keep uh, these things segmented. So I've now got two APIs I've defined effectively. I've defined this client API classes here. I've defined the ground up DB, which is a factory class. Um, I've defined the I database implementation. We've not got a key value pair type at the moment, but that's not a problem. Um, and then behind that, I've got my server API and I've defined my embedded database, which uses Pimple Idiom. Um, I'm not doing these yet. Um, I've not abstracted this out. It's just a key value store at the moment. And then Behind that, I've got my implementation class there, which has got all the implementation files. I've not done these bits yet. I'm going to abstract that out in a future lesson. But as you can see, we've abstracted this out now, which is great. Um, so let's go and make sure all these things work. So I'll go into the main here as well. Make sure we're doing the same thing. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. middle. Uh, there we go, another one. There we go, it seems to work. Let's compile everything together, make sure it's not a fluke. That's what's building, make sure I'm in the right folder. Uh, nope. Oh no, undefined symbols. Uh oh. Our database, I database constructor. Yeah, it's absolutely right. I've not actually implemented. <laughs> so I've defined these things, but I've not um, implemented the constructor, which is a bit weird. I'll not do that. Damn it. Um, what I can do though, I don't want to write any code and tell the compiler, just go and create one, buddy. Please, please, please. Um, is that the only one it's got? Uh, destructor as well. Uh, I've put equals zero, it's pure virtual. So, why are you whinging at me? Three destructor, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Pretty sure I don't want to do this. But I can't be bothered to argue right now. So make sure they're in there. I think I have to define those because they're the very base, the basis of the inheritance chain. And you can compute the memory size if you've not got the construct and the destructor, I think. Okay, well, that's currently compiled. I hate that, it doesn't say done. It's really annoying. Um, Run the tests. Oh, look at that. Thank God that I was a bit bum squeaky nervous. Um, let's go into the command line interface though and make sure there's no like weirdness going on. 
Um, so let's run that and I'm going to create a database with the name MyDB. Cool. I'm going to set a key with a value Wibble. Actually, no, I'm going to show you something cool. So this is something that Terence desperately wanted. Um, so he wanted to be able to go, hmm, let's use a smiley and set it to a particular value. And luckily we can uh, do that. Let's see if this actually works. One for Terence here. Oh, helps you spread the better base name. Yep, that seemed to work. Now if I do get minus d minus n my db. Yay! See, smileys are fully supported. There we go, that'll keep uh, my friend Terence happy. Uh, which is good. So we now support so we support UTF eight, unsurprisingly. So any Unicode string can be used as a key or value name. Um, that's the kind of flexibility I want to add into this thing, just because you know people love smiles. Uh, so we've done that. So what have we done? We've successfully. If we go back to our use cases as a software developer, we've done the includes, we've done the namespace, we've done the pimple idiom, and we've abstracted out a different level. So we've done. I did it a horrifically complicated manner because rather than just doing one class of the pimple idiom, um, I've got a client API, but also a backend server API. So I had to do it twice. So it was a very complicated explanation of the pimple idiom. I do apologize, but um, hopefully it showed you how to do it. And then as a product owner, I had new component implementation. So yeah, so I've now done all that, which is great. And all my tests still pass. But the interesting thing about this was I've written no new test code here because I've written no new code. Right. Um, I've written implementation code, but the whole point of the implementation code is that it's hidden from the client. So I can't write tests for it at this level. So, which means I haven't documented my user stories there. So I've documented my user stories um, in GitHub, which is fine. But now I think I've pretty much done. So let me go back to and do git status. That looks good. Yeah, add everything, naughty. Git commit minus m um, implemented uh, pimple idiom client API server extension API. It's getting quite long. There you go, job done. So I can now do uh, git flow feature finish number two. Uh, please enter a commit message uh, or not. Merge branch for each two into stem. Yeah. So this is my merge. So it does all the stuff for you. So it's merged into stem. For each branch for each two has been removed, you're now on branch stem. So if I give you git branch here, you see I'm still on stem and chunk. So I've not had to do any of that crazy stuff with pull requests and all that stuff. It's been done for me. So if I go back here to my code, um, and I actually, there's a really cool feature if you go to insights. I'm not sure if everybody can get to this, but if you click on network, you can see uh, all of these things here, right? Stem and trunk, and that's not correct. What's going on? Oh, I've not pushed. Duh. Git push. Yeah, you still have to do git push. Obviously. Right, there we go. So if I refresh my network view now, boom. So we see here that I um, did one thing to trunk. Uh, so I merged the trunk. And then I um, created another branch. So I, I created a commit on stem uh, before I did the feature branch. I didn't tell you about this. This was when I added the documentation. And then I created my feature branch. So I added the include pattern. I added the namespace and I added the pimple idiom. So you see all three of my commits there uh mentioned on this feature branch and then when i do finish it merged feature branch too so i've not had to do any of those commands by hand i literally typed in two commands so one was finish the feature and one was push now what i normally do is <coughs> well i did my normal commit and push so it is like like one extra command to get all of the advantages of having feature branches now i personally don't think 
Git flow is an awful lot of overhead and I would encourage people to use it, but there's people out there who massively disagree with me. There's like a religious war. You should only commit to master. Um, personally, I don't believe that, but, but that's a, uh... oh, hello. Oh, there we go. Yep. So, yep, we are done. So now what I can do is I can go back into my GitHub issue and I can look at my issue. I can say, well, as luck would have it, it is now been done. So what I should have done, I can close this now, but what I should have done, I completely forgot, is in my commit message, if I'd have put um, the word fixed space hash two, this would have been automatically closed when I did that push. Um, but I can just close the issue now. It's no great hassle. But that saves you even more time if you do it that way. So now I've got zero open issues. I've got the code done. And that's me for today. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll trim this down and make it a bit more uh, user friendly. But uh, on the next one, we're going to do something more databasey. So we've done some C++ stuff now, but now we're going to go into and do something databasey. So I'm going to um, enable you to have really complicated um, key value names. As you saw before, we uh, we had um, smileys where we support now, but we're going to add more to that. So we're going to support ridiculously complicated, ridiculously long names. Um, which might not work in different operating systems. We have to think about how we're going to do that. We have to think about how, no matter how big the name of the key, we want the storage and retrieval out to be efficient. So we're going to come up with a method of making sure that that is pretty much linear. Uh, well, mm, log <laughs> um, complexity um, rather than linear. Um, yeah, log complexity for the number of keys we've got. So that's what we're going to do in the next one. So we're going to talk about database efficiency and implement everything around efficiency. But I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave a comment, subscribe to the channel.